The number one way in 2023 to get a board game from 15,000 to a million is posting four times a day on TikTok, the different creative that shows the game, three to four times on Instagram, four times on YouTube Shorts, three times on LinkedIn, Twitter, Threads, Meta, Awesome. Organic content on social networks at the highest level that you can output is going to give you what you want. A few years ago, I spent three days with you in Sydney. Yes. Had dinner with you. You I did remember. a live video with me. It was fabulous. Uh, at the time, we were in an event with about 30 people. Yes. They were all asking you questions about business and numbers, and I was a baby. Our business had barely made 900,000 in three years. And I said to you, what if it's not all about business? What if it's not all about numbers? What if you just get to love people? And you gave me the, I'm gonna cry. You gave me permission to build a business loving people. And there are people in this room today, there's one there, there's, they're all over this room, that are here because I believed you. I have now made just under $10 million since that time. I love you, so thank you. This is just about gratitude. Thank you for giving me permission to love people. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Congratulations. Let's clap it up for Elizabeth. Look, I really believe what just happened with Elizabeth and I so, so, so much. Not because I want to. This is very important for everyone to hear. I don't believe being nice and doing things you like are more likely to lead to money because I want that to be the case. I actually want to be right. I I need everybody to hear this. I'm not talking about this because it's how I'd like it to be. I talk about it because it's how it is. And so I'd much rather be right than almost anything. It's enjoyable. I mean it. Like, I think people can associate with that. It's why I do all my predictions when they're not really predictions because they already happened, which is why I'm not wrong often. (laughs) I just observe quicker, analyze faster, and create content around it quicker than most. What just, what Elizabeth just talked about is super real. Like, I'm telling you, I watch all of you, the world, chasing the next trend. I've literally watched in the last four years hundreds of people that I see running around the internet that have gone from cannabis experts to blockchain experts to psychedelic experts to AI experts when they were never an expert of jack shit. Stop chasing and stop, start looking inside. And for her, it was like, hey, I like having this business, but like me, it feels even better of what it's doing with the people I'm working with or for whom or who's buying my thing. And like, if that's you, then that's what you need to focus on more than the P&L or maximizing your funnel. Hey guy, Uh, my name is Kosi from Blockstars. Um, I've been following you since 2012. Thank you. I really resonated with you when you said the thank you economy. I yes. loved it. And then you got into um, NFTs. Yes. I'm a tech guy. So yes. I got a question. Um, we have a saying, we say, uh, leave your ego at the door. Yes. Come to the office and you can take it home when you go home. Yes. Um, but one of the things that I heard recently is like, um, I got fucking ego. I don't really swear much, but it's, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, can ego and being humble uh, be at the same time, or well, are they two different things? That no, I think, I think, first of all, ego is slang for insecurity. Let's start there, mm. right? And I think a lot of people mix up confidence with ego. Confidence is humility, and ego is insecurity. So, that's how I see it. I think you can be confident and humble, but being insecure and humble is much harder to contain in a container of a human. So that's how I see it. Awesome, thank you. You got it, I see it, brother, thank you. Tēnā kue te rangatira, Gary, ko Pat and Fia Hau, uri tēnei no Waikato, ngā tīmā hanga haurua taku, 
Taku hapu a tia Maori ora. Uh, kia ora, kia ora Gary. Um, I'm Pat. I'm representing uh, the the fan verse here. We, a bunch of us flew across from New Zealand and have come across from Australia to see Thank you, mate. Thank you. Some of our uh, community were up in Indianapolis for VCon as well. So it's uh, just want to express how grateful we are that you're here today. Thank you, my friend. Uh, I have a question, and it's um, it's just around the the Web three space and what you're doing with V friends. Uh, yes. Tactical. So please indulge me. Just. I will. Second. Yeah. So I saw you at the National last week. Yes, the and, sports card um, convention yeah, in America. Yeah, the sports card trading yes. card convention. And uh, I was wondering about um, what the significance is of trading cards to their overall VFriend strategy, because obviously VFriend's big Web3 play, and I was just really interested to see you going in so heavy on that IRL tra uh, trading card space. Let me tell you the, a story that I think will perfectly tell you what I was doing there. There was a gentleman I spoke to on Sunday of the card show that first walked by the booth on Wednesday night, who had no idea who I was as a human being and had never heard of eFriends. On Thursday, he stopped by again because he saw all the commotion by the booth and he bought a pack of cards to open because he just wanted to learn. Thursday night, he went to Google and started doing homework. Friday, he came and bought a bunch of the higher end cards because he decided that maybe this could be like a Pokemon. On Saturday evening, he came up to me and said, hey, I don't even know really what an NFT is, but is there somebody on your team that can help me buy one of this character, because this is my favorite character that I got in a pack of cards? That was what I was doing there. Uh, any V-Friends party tonight, or what's the story? What's that, brother? We got a V-Friends party tonight, what's that? Yes, I'm gonna stop by real quick. I think, look, Nobody's gonna buy a Spider-Man comic book number one unless there's Spider-Man cartoons and Spider-Man movies. Nobody's gonna do anything from a collectible standpoint unless they care about the characters. I need to create the character demand in the physical and the digital world, and I think that's my major strategy. Thank you, bro. You got it, brother. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. So Hi. Nice to be here. My name is Rebecca. Rebecca. I've got a really successful coaching business. I'm a co oh, there we go. Um, I'm a business coach. Okay. I have grown to multiple seven figures in a couple of years, yes. and at the moment, I have this high quality problem that every person that steps into my world, I make them feel like they're the only person in my world, and I have this deep, close connection with my clients, and. I have this fear of really scaling and taking it to the next level because my only concern right now is I don't want to lose that personal touch That's that awesome. I built with my clients. Yes. How would you suggest that I do that, still remaining in integrity whilst allowing my business to scale? By charging more money. Ew! Ew! <laughs> <laughs> Can do. Right? Like, if you have a lot of passion for being that hands-on, mm -hmm. but you also have a passion for it to make more revenue, the answer to the question is more money. They have to pay more, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's okay, that's a business model. Mm -hmm. But that, even if you hit the highest level of what a business coach can make, mm -hmm. it will still tap out because you're one human. Correct. If you want to keep growing your business, you'll have to give that up. You'll have to do other things. That's a decision you have to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so there's two ways. One, you change or adapt or add to your philosophical, emotional, religious point of view on your high touch strategy, or you charge more, or you do both. But you're fully in control of that. Amazing. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Of course. Hi Gary, you, you my name it. is you. You can pull it down. Um, hi Gary, my name is Nika. Um, Nika. I saw you in Brisbane a couple of years ago and thank you so much for coming back again. Of course. Um, so you're a person who's very self-aware and trusts in the process. Um, what are some key indicators you've noticed in your own experience that have come up when you're on the brink of a breakthrough, basically saying to not give up and to keep going through? The definition of a breakthrough is you don't know. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Which is why I keep going back to what I want to tell everybody, which is how about you make it about enjoying it versus the need for the breakthrough, mm -hmm. right? I appreciate the six people that understood what I was fucking saying, <laughs> which is gonna make me say it again that more people didn't 
go all the way there with me. I'm gonna say it again. The concept of a break, breakthrough is a really great question because a lot of people here are grinding and they're asking themselves, hey, I wanted to have this business or this thing. Even in relationships, I wanted this. And now it's been a while and it's not there. Is it ever gonna happen? Should I jump off? Do, should I change? This is man and woman's biggest question a lot of times. And the answer is you're not gonna know. You're just not. Sure, you can see gradual, but like you know this, when you're grading your own homework, it's not the truth. Like most people think their kid is good looking. (laughs) You know, but in reality, like not everyone is good looking, but we all as parents think our kids are the cutest. We're grading our own homework, we're not letting the merit of the world grade. Same here. I'm thinking of this from a different perspective. I'm asking you, why do you need the breakthrough? Yeah, it, I think it's the, the people pleasing and this not being able to say no to other people and wanting to, um, yeah, to, to prove it to yourself and to other people and you don't want to do that, no. There is no proving to oneself. Yeah. That's disguise to I want to prove it to someone else. Yeah. Proving to oneself You never think about proving. You're just living. Mm -hmm. You don't even talk in words of proof. You're trying to prove to someone else. Thank you. Mommy, daddy, like those things. And that's what we're all doing. I don't want you to prove to any, if you were driven, this is why Star Wars figured it out. (laughs) I mean it. There's either the good side, like, the, you know, the Jedi's and the dark side, they're just so close, it's an inch. They're being fueled by different things, but they both get there. But in the end, the light, love wins. You can't be driven by proving it to the parent or another person that fucked you up. You have to find a way to do it for yourself. Yeah. Then you're not looking for the breakthrough, you're just living happily. Yeah. Thank you so much. What's happening, Gary? How are you? Life is good, my man. What's your name? My name's Mana. Nice to meet you, brother. Um, this is pretty surreal for me because in 2017, you know, I was lost, no direction, found myself having to uh, live back home with my parents, embarrassed about that because I was a grown-ass man, you know, doing that. And uh, I knew I had to change my mind and needed some, a good kick in the ass. And so I typed in inspiration or motivation or something like that on... Instagram or YouTube and came across you and I started listening and then slowly started changing my mind and then fast forward six years um, I'm living thousands thousands of miles away here in Australia and have my own business so um, I think I speak you know not only for myself but everyone else in this room when I say thank you for inspiring and motivating and telling us the things we need to hear and not always what we want to hear, so. Um, my, my question is, will you go live with me so we can make this come around full circle? Right now? Yeah, right now. Sure. So, you, you set up and get your shit together there. You're good, you can go right there. I'll just do this, because I love efficiency. Go ahead. You tell me when yours is really ready and enough people are on. How you going, Gary? My name is uh, Stuart. You can call me Coxie. Coxie, I'm ready. But, uh, I'm setting up a uh, health media company and it's all about healthy communication. Yes. And I see what you're doing here is very much healthy communication in regards to respect for people and whatnot. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm a man of science and a man of you know, clinical experience. Yes, sir. And we're in this period whereby there's a lot of discussion with TikTok and short form flickable screen stuff. Yes. And children that have been parented by a constant, well, a lazy parenting, you could say. Okay. Or what the pedi- pediatricians say. Yes. That's creating a lot of anxiety and a lot of ADD behaviors in children who are needing a lot of therapy and getting thrown a lot of drugs. Okay. Do you see where we're getting to a point where potentially that's going to be a intervention whereby TikTok's like, okay, hang on a second. People are just gonna start dropping this thing if there's a bunch of evidence leaning in this direction? 
And will there be, you know, is there going to be a shift away from that or will TikTok change or will it move back towards other deliverable media? Um, I think there's a lot to that. So a couple things. One, the conversation we had earlier about accountability really matters. I'll give you an example. When I was 14, the conversation wasn't TikTok because the internet hadn't happened and phones hadn't happened. The conversation was supermodels that were 90 pounds that led to every girl in my high school being in the bathroom during school throwing up because they thought 90 pounds was the gold standard. And the demon of the day was MTV and magazines. Uh, In America in the 1930s, this question was asked, it was around alcohol. Right, we needed to ban it. We banned alcohol in America, right? The, I think this question's gonna evolve into non-lazy parenting, accountability, and the way everything works in life, which is balance. There's people that talk about sugar this way. There's people that talk about speed limits this way. I think that there's a lot of things we can talk about, and I think that by the time we get around to properly regulating or understanding this, the attention of the consumer is gonna go somewhere else. I believe you and I will be sitting here in 20 years talking about the dangers of the metaverse because we don't leave our home because we're in VR and we'll look back to the days of TikTok and think of it as mundane the way that everyone told me that playing video games all day was fucking up everyone and that's the reason everyone had ADD 20 years ago was because we played video games all day. So I think there is balance in everything and I believe in government playing a role in regulating but I really believe in humans thinking about the accountability of it. And so, no, I don't think TikTok's gonna change because TikTok's empty. TikTok's a super empty vessel, brother. Their business is very simple. We are going to build an algorithm that only gives you more of what you've shown us you want. Period. And so I I think that that's where the world's gonna go that we're gonna continue to get smarter about accountability just like we did in America with alcohol. Banning alcohol didn't fix the problem. Educating people of how to find balance with alcohol has made the problem better. Not demonizing people that have alcoholism and realizing it's a disease has made the issue better. Not talking about domestic violence as something that was whispered behind the scenes but putting it to the forefront has made things better. So I think that's what's gonna end up happening with it. Matt, we'll say that uh, having a conversation eye to eye and in person, you're a great example. It's a thousand X compared to a screen. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks, bro. You're welcome. Are we live? Bro, you know it takes a second for everyone to come. Keep it live. I'll be there in two seconds. Go ahead. Hey, Gary, how are you today? Good, mate. Awesome, that's fantastic. Sorry if I seem a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit new to this whole entrepreneurial <laughs> sort of scene. But you're not new to speaking. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very you're much. I, uh, my name's Jake, by the way. I'm 20 years old. I live in Brisbane. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to be honest, I did remember what I was going to say, but it's flying out of my head. Uh, <laughs> I say, I, I, Let's clap it up for Jake. I think first of all, I really appreciate how attentive you are to each individual that's coming up to the microphone and also just everyone as a whole. Um, it makes me feel really, I feel, I feel much more comfortable now that I'm looking at you. Good. I felt very nervous coming up here. No worries. Um, because I'm very new to business, I'm finding yes. it a little bit difficult to discuss with my parents about what I'm doing and getting them on their whole, you know, supportive parenting wagon. I just want to know, I don't know, I'd assume there'd be people here that might have similar experiences. Oh, it's a very common that. thing. Yeah, I was just wondering. Well, why do you want them to be supportive? That's actually a really good question. And all this. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually a really good question. I feel as if it's a little bit of a moral obligation for me coming back from nice. a European background. It's very family yes. oriented. Oh, I know. And as by the sounds of it, you're very close with your parents. Yes. I'm just wondering, do you have any advice around that? And maybe what would be the best way to get them on board with what I'm doing? There is no convincing in life. Oh. <laughs> I, I want everybody to hear this. This is, the pro- this is a huge problem right now. Mm. The answer to the question is go and execute mm. and be successful and watch how your parents change their tune. Okay. Yeah. There's that. Thank you. But I'm going to use your question to talk about something else. There is no convincing in life. Do you, this is why politics makes me laugh. 
as if your view on the world is the right view. Everyone's spending all their time trying to convince everyone else to see the world exactly the way they see it. Instead of convincing, brother, why not take that energy and make it about conviction? So not convincing, have conviction with yourself on this journey and be empathetic to why your parents see it this way. They might have been academic, they might have immigrated here and they didn't do all this hard work for you to take a high risk. Like Parents <laughs> navigate through fear. Mm. They're scared you're gonna fail. Okay, yeah, yeah. The, the parents also use their children as a proxy to their own self-esteem too often. Well, wow. okay. They're not only scared that you're gonna fail for you because they love you, they're scared that you're gonna fail because they're worried about what other people are gonna think about you. Yeah. Okay. Right? Have compassion for that, mm -hmm. but I have the news alert. You're not gonna convince them. So. Don't spend any minutes on that because you need those minutes to go and execute your shit. Awesome. Jake. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say one last thing. Sorry, just before you go. I, um, I have 100% faith in myself that I'll be working with you in a few years and I hope everyone else here has that vision as well because you're an amazing voice to this generation and I appreciate you. And can I come up and shake your hand, by the way? You I can. really, really. See what you fucking started? <laughs> Good luck, brother. Good luck. Thank you. You ready now? Good. I know how to turn it around. <laughs> All right, we're here fucking on live. Here he is. He asked, here's fucking Brisbane. What's up, man? <laughs> These three people on here are fucking... <laughs> no, that's good. Three is better than zero. Let me finish my point. These three people on here Always, always understand this moment. Those three people are the single most important three people. Yes. All right. Yeah. right? Notice, yeah. how, notice how when I was trying to say something, when I said three, the laugh came, because we get it, I get it. But the reason I stand here today with more than three people is because of my original three people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about the numbers. Exactly yeah. right. You, fucking, numbers, you fucking care about yes. those three people more than anything, and that'll be 13, and that'll be 33, and that'll be that. Love you, bro. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Hi, Gary. How are you? My name's Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Thank you for coming. Um, You're welcome. I've been following you for a little while, and, and the enigma that you are, there's a question I want to... I would only ask person to person. Yes. I describe you sometimes to people as like, He's like the Rick Rubin to entrepreneurs, you know? And uh, I've seen a transformation of you like tripling down on authenticity. Yes. So I have a personal question that you don't Please. have to answer or yes. you can. Um, just to kind of get that clarity of, of, of character that does amaze a lot of people. You know, what, what's something in your life that someone has done or you've observed that, that's, that's been real authentic kindness that you'll never forget? Oh, that's a great fucking question. Oh. Michael Angelo. Oh. You know, it's a really good question. So, I would say, by a distant margin, the way my mom has lived her life is very clear when I hear this question. I've just watched her spend her entire life giving energy to everyone without asking any in return. Yes. You know? And so, it's funny, when you ask the question, it's a good question, and I've really tried to go into my mind on can I think of anything that is more one-off than what I just answered, right? I was thinking like, that's, that's the answer that came right away, but I think I've established that and I'm sitting here quickly as you were asking it, is there something else I can say that might bring value as well? But then as I process it, it's just so obvious to me that there's not even a distant second. I'll tell you where it shows up now that I can build on what I just said. By observing my mom live that life, and by having similar DNA and then being inspired and parented to do the same. What has happened is something interesting, which is I see it very clearly in young children outside. The purest form of kindness I see is when kids normally under the age of eight stop what they're doing when they're playing, when one of them gets hurt, when I watch eight kids at a playground play and somebody gets hurt 
almost always all seven or six other kids continue to play, but one comes over and comforts that child. That deeply empathetic under eight year old is the one I thought of when you asked me the question. Thanks for sharing that. You know what, do you, know, do you understand what I'm saying? Because what that represents for me is they haven't even lived life enough to know about anything. They're just doing it because they're doing it. There is no reason they're doing it. It's in them. And this is why I'm passionate about empathy and kindness and compassion and sympathy because it's good. It's really good. And if you really watch the interact, this is why I want more of you to go out in the world and observe. And I think the edges are interesting. Under eight, over 80. There's a lot of fucking answers there. But don't do it with people in your family because that's too contextual. It's too convoluted. It's got baggage. Start, like the next time you go to the airport, watch. Look for 80 year olds and look for eight year olds and watch. You'll get really interesting answers. My brother. Gary. Yes. Love you, man. I love Absolutely. you back, brother. Um, Couple of things happened in, in my life. We're a Mexican family, uh, immigrated to New Zealand 20 years ago. Wonderful. So I reflect a lot with your family and what yes. happened with your parents. And yes. Um, two things happened uh, five years ago. I started following you and I broke the relationship with my daughter. You started following me and what happened? So, <clears throat> man, I can't. Yes, I of course, it's emotional. What did you say I didn't hear you? So, uh, my daughter got a tattoo in the arm. Your daughter got a tattoo on the arm. And I thought the life was over, you know, for me. Because life was, was over when she got a tattoo. Yeah, because I thought. Because you're an old school fucking dude. Yeah, and I, <laughs> but because of that, I thought, what is my family going to think about it? Of course. And, and I don't ever thought about what actually my child think about herself, you know? That's right. And then I was lying in bed and I watched your video to say, what the fuck we think about it, you know? What about their kids? What they think about themselves? What well, we're worried about what actually, what our parents are, everything else. Back in Mexico, that are miles That's and right. miles away. What I'm worried about it. That's right. And that moment I realized like, a, what am I doing? Like I'm ready to break the relationship with my own daughter. That I because the tattoo she got, Yeah. because back home, your mom, your uncle, your dad, who? Yeah, yeah. Who? They, well, all of them? Yeah, all of them. But the whole fucking family yeah. in Mexico yeah. was gonna shit on you yeah. because your daughter got a small tattoo on her wrist. Yes. I understand, go ahead. So, <laughs> anyway, in that moment, my life completely changed. I said, what the fuck am I doing? You know, like a, what is Fuck Mexico. On? Yeah, fuck, fuck it. I love my daughter, you know? I, I absolutely love my daughter. That's right. Yeah, uh, five years ago, I started my own business. Yes. The first people I employ, my family, and my friends. Yes. In Mexico, we have a say, never employ family and friends. Yes. And then suddenly, I see Gary B to say, only hire your family and friends. Yes. Brother, you know what I just realized? I'm about to get into a huge fucking fight with Mexico. <laughs> so, thank you very much. I'm now, very we humbled. Are, we are a $10 million company. We are 35 employees, three companies. We got our own uh, media um, agency yes. and work for the three companies and for everything else. Amazing. You are a true inspiration. Thank you very much for being who you are. Thank you. We love you, brother. We are I have a big idea. Before I, go, I have a big idea. I think you need to go home, grab your daughter, and go to the tattoo parlor, and you should get a tattoo. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that you got him to swear and he used to be worried about a, a tattoo on him. That's right. That's, that's really cool. Hi, Gary. My name's Zoe. Hi, Zoe. I just want to film this because I'll fix sure. everything you, you say. You got it. Give it to one of those minutes. handsome guys there so they can hold it for you. If that's okay. Yeah, of course. Hi, can you just hold it? You don't have to film him, just so I can hear it later. Um, hi, nice to meet you. Welcome Pleasure. Welcome to Briz, La <laughs> Briz Vegas. Thank you. Um, so, I recently launched my business, an eco nappy and wipe company, because I needed these products for my son when yes. he was a baby. They weren't available. Yes. So I'm brand new, just launched, it's all me. And I wrote this down because like that guy over there, yeah. I thought I'd get here and forget. You don't want to forget, good for you, go ahead. So my question is, when you've just launched and it's more or less just you. Yes. Um, 
Where do you focus your time? If you were me, what would you be focusing your time on? I know there's social media, there's yep. marketing, I've got to yep. pack orders, yep. emails coming, yes. phone calls, I have yes. a son, yes. a life, yes. after school things. Yep. Where do you focus your time on the business and your money? Two, and... two things. Okay. Notice how I said eight and 80 before? Yes. I hate the middle. <laughs> the middle is a commodity. The edges is where it's interesting. So the answer to your question is the following. I would focus on my things when it's just you, on the things I've done in the same scenario and the things that I've observed from many that works. A, the shit that's most on fire, right? Whatever's fucking most on fire, it's like being in a boat. If there's a hole over here, you gotta put your finger there, right? The things that are most on fire, and then B, the things you like the most out of all the things you're doing. The things, by focusing on the things you like the most, whatever those things are, making the product, whatever it is, it's gonna give you the fuel to have the energy to fix the shit that's most on fire that will get you to the next phase where you can start bringing people in and afford to do the things you don't wanna do. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. The key though, right now, so that's a good framework for you to think about, but the key that you have to really lean into right now is realize that you have to lean into patience. It's impossible for it to happen overnight. I'm very patient, so good. And what you need to do is just realize it's just a process and find the things that you enjoy about it. And then more importantly, I think you have a really, really strong product market fit. My favorite business in the world, always, is when somebody starts something to scratch their own itch or an itch they had. And so I think you gotta stay with that conviction because you're gonna help a lot of people. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome, Zoe. Hey, Gary. What's up, brother? Um, My name is Ananda, um, and I run a real estate digital marketing agency here in Brisbane. First of all, it's a privilege to be even able to stand here and ask you this question, man. Thank you. I'm 23 years old. I've been listening to you since I was probably, I don't know, fucking 14 or something. (laughs) That hurt. I'm talking to an uncle. Uh, (laughs) That fucking hurt. (laughs) But fair enough, bro. Go ahead. Um, So as a young guy who's pretty new into business, I've, I've, we've hit like the six figure run rate pretty quickly in my journey. Good. But what I've figured out was, that was holding me back a lot, was the fact that there's a thing going around, there's a standard version of a product in an industry. Yes. And there are tons of people in my own network all around the world that are kind of doing pretty much the same thing. Makes sense. But I'm not able to just do the same thing as everyone else because I'm not, I don't just want to make money, I just want to, I want to make a product that is truly exceptional. That's great. So how would I approach that when everyone seems to be doing just pretty much the same thing? By doing what you just said. <laughs> but how do you know, you know, what is the next step on top of all these other like huge companies out there that are already doing very similar things? Well, if you have the ambition and the audacity to make a truly exceptional product, you need to put in the work to figure out that question. Is that something you did at VaynerMedia? Um, yes, I decided to not do what you're doing right now, which was give any attention to anybody else doing anything, and I focused 100% of my attention on my people and on honing my craft at being the best social media marketing company in the world, even though everybody else who was multi-billion dollar companies told me it could never work. Everybody else is a waste of time. Thank you so much, man. Love you. Hi, Gary. Hi. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you. I'm Jess. Jess. Um, I have a, I'm I'm in a software development company. SaaS? SaaS platforms, marketplace platforms. Yep. Really awesome. We work with um, small to medium businesses. Good. Only issue is small to medium businesses don't pay consistently. You mean they, don't pay at all, or no, they're slow pay. to pay? They that, pay. But they're slow but on their so terms. So it's like yeah. late, uh-huh. sometimes not. Yes. So we move into corporate. Okay. Corporate's great, except I'm not really a fit for corporate. Makes My sense. My personality? Yeah. Not You're at all. Jess. I'm Jess. Yeah. I do stand-up comedian. I'm a stand-up comedian. Oh, I try to be. I'm actually quite bad at it. But Fair enough. I, <laughs> but I you like that. it. I do. I love it. Go ahead. I put that on social media. And I share that to create a following. Yes. I have a day where I'm inspired by something. I put that on social media to create my following. So why is that not corporate? 
Well, in corporate, some of it, I think my business partner cringes at. It sounds like your business partner's the problem, not corporate. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> He's actually, 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 actually. <laughs> Fuck. Um, he, he's actually pretty good. He actually okay. is pretty good. He's here, right? He is here. Yeah, got it. <laughs> He'd be cringing right now. Yes. Um, what, I, what I'm saying is, with all your experience, and I think I just need the permission from yes. you, does it actually wreck your brand if you're building, you know, we're building platforms for big corporates? I, actually... have, a, I have a business yes. that does three four hundred million dollars in revenue around the globe to fortune 500 companies and I post the most outlandish I post me going to garage sales I curse every third word on LinkedIn I dress like a fucking teenage boy <laughs> what and the fuck do you think the answer is you know, sorry, one, more, one more question does it exclude people yes Okay. But you want to hear something really well, don't fun, Jess? it too. Do you want to hear something funny? Sure. It also includes people. Yeah. Does it exclude people? 100%. But do I believe that you will get customers because you are silly or ridiculous and they're like, fuck it, I'd rather go with her because I'm silly and ridiculous too and I get to write the check over here in corporate? Yeah. I do. And it sounds like you and your partner are actually a good fucking combo. Because if you're silly, and he or, he or she, he, he, yeah. he isn't, well now you've given companies both options. Yeah. You're welcome, Jess. Thank you. Hey Gary, my name is Joe. Joe. Thank you so much for coming down and uh, taking the 37 hour, whatever flight it is to get here. 26. 26 hours. Well done. Thank you, Pooh. Uh, I've been blessed enough to have been running my own training business now for the last 17 years, focusing on emotional fitness. Love. And uh, it's, it, the, the core mission of emotional fitness in our world is to transform people's relationship with uncertainty. Yes. And it's done wonders to massively reduce anxiety and depression that people have been working Makes with. Sense. And also, it's actually helped so many fall back in love with themselves. Makes sense. Yeah, and um, I, I'm just, I have no idea how to transform this business into a movement, into scaling it into a movement. By putting out content on the internet. Yes. Right. <laughs> Thank you. You do know. I've been doing that, I've been doing that. More. Right. How much? Don't uh, lie, because I'll look it up. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've got a private group called Emotional Fitness Hub. That's, that's not doing So anything. that's no good? No. Okay. You're talking to seven people. Right. The world has eight billion. Sure. Sure. So, so we're talking daily, um, multiple dailies? As many as, as, many as I can. Pop, I would, if you could post 39 times a day, 39 different messages on nine different platforms, I'll take it. Right. Okay. But I'll definitely take one from you because right now you're just talking to a group of a small group of people and you're trying to change the world and that's not gonna work. Right, okay. Changing the world looks like you giving the information to the world for free and expecting nothing in return. Yes. Yeah. Love it, love it. Thank you. The time for about three more. We'll keep going a little bit. I'll do as much as I can. Go ahead, hi. Hey Gary, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name's Tasha Burke. Hi Tasha. Um, I'm a creative. Good. Um, it's, yeah, it can be good. It's great. <laughs> it, yeah, it is great, but it's also a struggle sometimes. But Everything's a struggle sometimes. It, correct. Thank you. Um, so, I've, <laughs> so I've got millions of ideas like creative people do, mm -hmm. but I've had an idea of some NFTs for a while. Okay. So I just wanted to see what you thought about where the NFT space is at the moment. Do you think it's... Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, but so was internet after the internet stock crash in 2000. All the people that are making fun of NFTs now to their friends that were into NFTs were the same people in 2020 making fun of the internet, excuse me, 2000 making fun of the internet because the internet stocks crashed. Yeah. NFTs and the blockchain are massively profound technologies. Yeah. It was greed 
that made it crash, but the technology still exists. And if you were to execute a meaningfully strong NFT project and knew how to build demand for it and brought value, you would succeed. Okay. 99% of people fail in real estate. 99% of people fail in their business. 99% of sports cards and sneakers and art aren't worth anything. Mm. You need to focus on being the 1%, not worrying about what's happening with NFTs. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Especially because you're a creative and the best thing to be when you're a creative is actually making what you wanna make. You don't need it to be commercially viable. You need to get some of your million ideas out into the world. That's what being creative is. Sorry. Hi, my name is Darian, how are you? Darian, good. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me here. I actually won tickets and um, it's just such an honor to be here, so thank you. Um, I'm 26 years old, I run a tutoring and mentoring business. Um, We started a few years ago and we've been doubling in revenue every year. Congrats. Thank you, I have 43 staff um, and I grew up in foster care. Yes. After my really rough upbringing and my connection to the kids that I work with, I'm desperate to be a role model on a much larger scale than what I'm working on now. Makes sense. And I've done three talks. Yes. My first talk was a TEDx talk. Okay. Which was incredibly nerve-wracking. Thank you. And I really want to know how to go up from here because it feels like I've started off strong and very quickly stagnated. And I just don't know where to go next. Well, Well, there's a lot to this. So first of all, I too at 26 because of a very different upbringing, had incredible passion to make an impact. And I didn't even speak until I was 33 to almost no one very far away from a TEDx talk. (laughs) Yeah. What I think you're doing is putting yourself into a position to mentally fail because you're not being patient, (laughs) right? Yeah. Just because your next talk might be smaller or not as fancy as TEDx, Mm. it doesn't mean that you're not impacting. Your ability to impact is similar to Joe. Like, you should be making content every day about this. Yeah. And you shouldn't be putting the the magnitude of the speech on a pedestal. You should be putting doing the work for people on a pedestal. Mm. Yeah. And that's ultimately where the heart's coming from. Right. I want to impact, but I just want to impact more. (laughs) Yes, I know that. Even you... Even the way you story told, right? You talked about 43 employees. That's impressive, people reacted. You talked about TEDx. It makes so much sense to me that you want to put things into context to speak to it. But if you're talking about helping, you can't be doing any of the helping for vanity or insecurity. You have to be doing it for helping. Yep. So just focus on the helping, Mm. not impressing us. For sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my God, I feel sick. (laughs) Hi Gary, I'm Mel. Mel? Um, I like your hat. Thanks, it's really furry. Um, Okay, I'm gonna try to keep this really short and sweet. You can can fix the mic if you want. Okay, hi. Um, So I own a hair extension business and I've been in business. You own a what? A hair extension company. A hair extension, We do a lot of education and uh, we are quite, like we've been in business for quite a long time. We're doing quite well. However, we run courses at the moment and we teach like other salons how to do hair extensions. I'm aware of the concept. And, okay. But there's quite a lot of people in my space that I'm aware, have started to. Which is why I'm aware of the contents. <laughs> but they, so they do the same thing, but they're also allowing people that have no qualification to learn this as well. Yes. Now I have there's two sides of me. There's one side of me that's like, no, you have to be qualified. You've always had to be. I had to do it. Everyone else has to do it. It's not fair. You don't know right. enough. And then there's the other side of me that's going, wake the fuck up, Mel, it's 2023, things have changed, that piece of paper doesn't mean anything from the government anymore. I think that so second I person's a lot smarter than the first person. Okay. The Keep second going. person is going to cause some hurricanes in the industry because I know a lot of people in my space have that same mindset as Mel number one. What, does that, okay have, what with, does that have to do with Mel number three that's sitting in front of me? Yeah. I think because for a long time now, on my, with my audience, I do have a lot of loyal clients. Yes. I have built that clientele because we felt the same about not having people that aren't qualified doing the extensions. Okay. And now I think that when my mindset changes, 
I, I guess I'm scared because the people that love me because we think the same about that are uh, then going to be like, you've always preached that you need to be qualified to do it. Why would you talk about it at all? They, they'll, they'll see what I'm doing. Like, if I'm allowing people that aren't qualified. I see. You, yeah. You're talking about the concept of you're going to start taking on people who are not That's qualified. Right. Well, but there's no licensing in my industry. I it doesn't make sense that I should license it if the government doesn't. I understand. So, I don't know what to do. Well, it sounds like you're going to have, you know, it sounds like you're trading on an ideology that the market doesn't give a fuck about. Mm -hmm. And that your small market that you have right now, even though it's doing well, yeah. gives a fuck about it. But when the majority of the market doesn't, it sounds like you're about to give yourself an opportunity to have a bigger market. I definitely will, and it will be harder because it, they need to learn more, and I can give them that. I'm actually a great teacher. I believe in me and my you, product. You have to basically make a decision if you want to hold on to this ideology, yeah. which is fine, and have less upside financially, yeah. or if you're finally ready to let go of that ideology and give your business more growth. And I am, I just needed to hear it. You got it. <laughs> Hi Gary. How are I'm you? Zemmers. I'm wonderful. Thanks Good. for being here with us. Of course. I'm raising capital for my startup, something which I've never done before. Okay. I don't have uh, any track record uh, in business or in career. Yes. And so if this was you, how would you turn that lack of experience into a positive in conversations with investors or put another way, what would you emphasize instead to instill confidence with investors? Um, you're not going to be able to make it a positive for most people. Because you basically said, I've no, I have no experience and I've never done anything professionally. Give me money. <laughs> what I would do in that scenario is ask as many people as possible for money and hope I got lucky. That's like literally how it works, brother. That's pretty much where I'm at. Yeah. How many, and do you feel stuck? No, I've just, Good. I'm just starting that, so I was ready right. to do it. Yeah. Got my pitch deck. I think, I, the, I, yeah, I think the other thing you can do is make content about what you're thinking about doing, which will lead to potential demand. Yep. But you're, with no experience and no track record, you're gonna have to have someone buy into you. Yeah. So you just gotta tell them the truth. Okay. And it's gonna probably be one out of 100 people. Yep. And that's great. That's fine. Because that's better than nobody. Thank you, another quick question. I was at the very first VCon, so I live here now and I traveled there. I tried to give you a custom NFT and uh, we didn't quite square that up. Could I, even if it's a private wallet, yes. I know how you feel about public wallets. I would love to do that. Do send me an email I... to you, I'll send you what wallet. That's what I did last night. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what's funny about that little fun exchange? You're gonna need to have that to do what you're about to do. You might actually get money from a person you pitch a second time. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Hey, Gary, my name's Craig from Australia. Respect, Pleasure. Respect to you, respect to your parents. Thank you, brother. Um, you're always about adding value and bringing value to people. Yes. That's the reason I'd like to stand up here today. Um, basically started as an actor for eight years, sucked at it really bad. <laughs> Had the humility to realize that I didn't have the talent, wasn't going to make it, wasn't yeah. going to keep, I guess, bashing my head against the wall. Yes. Started a business, which I'd wanted to do. It fell on its ass. Yep. Um, jumped into the next one. Did the same thing. I've just come out of that. So you we're 0 for 3 so far? So far, yeah, so far. So far. So far. The thing I regret the absolute most about that is absolutely fucking nothing. Amazing. Wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing about it. Have had the humility to go back, start working, start again, yes. back in the back cave and Love. getting ready for the next one. Love. That's it. That's it. When I tell you, when I say that's it, I actually say that in the best way possible. That, you're, you're absolutely right for coming up here and saying that because that shit fires me up to no end. Me too. Because that's what I'm hoping for people to understand. Because if you have no regrets, and you sit up here and deliver what you just delivered the way you did, yep. and you're enjoying the concept of one of these things is gonna hit, and you don't have regret, do you know how many, brother, do you know how many people wanted to be actors and didn't try? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's fucking huge that you did that for eight years. Yep. 
Like, just not, like when you're sitting on that rocking chair at 91 and not having to be like, I wish I did. Because that's the thing you'll learn if you hang out with 80 and 90 year olds. They don't talk about anything, and I mean anything. If they're a stranger to you, anything besides two things. Happy or sad about how much time they spent with their family in their life, meaning thrilled they did a ton of it and they feel content or sad and wish they spent more. And then number two, the shit they didn't do. The shit they didn't do. I'm pumped for you, bro, that you've scratched yeah. that itch for eight I years. I appreciate it. And look, you know, it, it's all about, like you say, not having regrets. I've heard you say that many times. It's a big I'm one. Really connected. I will never look back and go, you know, I wonder what would happen. Because now I know what happened. I learned so much and it, it's changed me so much for the better. I've taken all three of those things with me. Brother, Rowan, when I tell you I can't wait to see you go one for seven, I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. So, hi Gary, my hi. name is Emma. Emma. So, how could you build confidence and credibility from scratch as a public speaker in Australia when you come from a different culture and speaks a different language? By speaking at places that are quite small for free yep. and doing it until you stop. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't convince people to like or dislike your accent. You can't. You just have to go home right now, go to Google, type in conferences, speaking, Australia, find somebody, find conferences, email them, say this is me, I would like to speak. Preferably you've made some content on the internet so they can look at it. Most will say no, one will say yes, you'll go up and do it, it will either go well or not well, you'll get off stage and decide if you wanna do it again, and that's it. You're not gonna build confidence or get people to like your accent by sitting at home thinking about it. You just have to do. Can I take your hands for the quickie? You can. What's up, brother? Hey, Gary, my name's Brolin. Um, Got a hug instead. Oh my God. Hey. Did you understand? Yeah, sure. Don't think about it. Okay. If they like your accent, good. If they don't like your accent, good. <laughs> hey, my name's Brolin, and uh, I've come to see you in Brisbane most times, hopefully all of them, and you. your values have encouraged a lot of positive fulfilment in my life, so thank you for that. Thank you. And uh, I also want to say, Ethan, I haven't heard of you before, I've been to a lot of these shows, I didn't know what we were going to get with Mindset Matters, I brought a backpack with a laptop, I thought I was just going to sit there all day waiting for Gary to come on. Thank you for not putting on a day with full of shit people trying to sell us things. Great job, mate. Thank you. Wish you all the success. Thank you. Uh, my question is, I um, started a business, it's an app, and we're kicking a few goals in Australia. Is it called Cruncher? It is. <laughs> I got a uh, government grant to take it to the US. Very nice. And, um, I've studied the fundamentals of marketing every which way possible. I've got $100,000 to spend in two years. Yes. And I don't know where to start. What would you like to happen? I don't want to be one of these full of shit startups where we get photos with us all in t-shirts and have PR campaigns. I want us to earn the credibility from people loving the product and what we do for them. Good. So you get the money and it's a big place. There's businesses that say, we can do this, we can do that, we should, we should do what strategies. Would you like, but you would, I assume you want people to download the app. I want people to understand what we do without it coming across as being the standard marketing um, campaign. I want to know, what I've found is that, you know, we've worked with Google, we've worked with a whole heap of different in, uh, marketing businesses in Australia. Yep. And everyone's got their own ideas of being a genius, but What's worked best for us is the genuine story, the door knocking, the face to face, people telling other people. And so do that. All the money in the world isn't going to solve that issue. I'm just wondering how to, what, what to start with. Knocking on the doors and doing hand to hand. 
it sounds like the money's confusing you because you're on two sides of the equation of what you know has worked and what you like to do versus what the money gives you in options. It sounds like you should take the money and hire another person that shares your values so you can scale the hand-to-hand combat. And what does that hand-to-hand combat look like in the States? How do you knock on doors with money? By knocking on doors. Right. Like, what do, you, what do you do in Australia? We're still trying. We're still trying. But you want to do more, but you feel like that's working for you. Well, I know what's going to work, and I know what everybody else says works. It's a matter of, you know, tag and release. Tag and release and see what comes back, and we're still in that process. So... Yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to a theme of a lot of questions here. Is it sounds like you have an ideology versus knowing a practicality. Let me ask you a different question. What do you think is gonna work? You said to me, you know what's gonna work. Tell me what's gonna work. Great social media campaign. Okay, and you don't want to do that? I do, but I'm not sure how to start it. Because there's so many sharks in the water. You know, so I think, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to go about that. Obviously, people post to him. There's a million people that are this guy or this guy. I think you should go learn it for yourself. Okay. Cool. It sounds what will work for you is not what they're saying about this guy or this guy. It sounds, in the way that you're asking the questions and how you're thinking about it, is you should go not worry about the money, you should go allocate the hundreds of hours to get good at it so you can do it yourself. Excellent, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. I, I also just want to say um, something that may benefit other people in the room just quickly, and you can come back to it after, I don't want to hog the mic, but um, I've got two small kids and I've got a story similar to what we talked about earlier. Um, where parents didn't have much time, you know, I was on the railroad tracks too, loved it. And um, now I've got two small kids and we spend so much time, we take them to gymnastics, swimming, they're both under three. Yes. Is there a danger in that now? Of course. To bring up a soft generation? Of course. The answer to everything is always balance. Right. You shouldn't not spend time with your kids, but you shouldn't be so up in their business and know everything about them and fight their fights. Awesome, I got it. Thank you. Hey, Kerry, how you going? Pleasure, mate. Uh, my name's Eloy, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah! I appreciate that. Yeah. Pleasure, bro. That was way too quick. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> all right. He understood the assignment. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, uh, I just wanted to say, man, all the love that's been uh, shared your way today, uh, I want to, you know, just add my voice to that. like. The amount of gratitude uh, and you know, uh, amazing empathy and everything that you're putting out into the world, it's amazing to have your voice you know, out you. there to the world. It's awesome, man. So, thank you. Yeah, just wanted to thank you on behalf of everyone and thank the you. whole world, really, I guess. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my name's Kyle. Um, I run a digital marketing agency called Social Geeks. Um, three years ago, I started working with an amazing company called Sharing Kindness, which uh, the founder, Tess, she started it to teach her kids, her two young daughters, uh, resilience and kindness and gratitude. Love the brand. Like, I've gone all in on this brand. It's amazing. <laughs> Good. Um, so last year, we launched a game on Kickstarter. Uh, it sold out, uh, got a whole bunch of pre-sales, and uh, we're, we're now just trying to get it out there. Uh, you know, we sold about 15,000 units wow. over the last year, which is a, an awesome thing to see. Yes. Um, what we're trying to do is get it into like a million homes. You know, okay. we're really trying to get it out there to as many people as we can because yes. it's all based on positive psychology and Got teaching it. kids empathy and kindness. And, I'm in. You know, so we're trying to get this out there and you're like the, the world's, you know, biggest voice on this. Oh no, I'm not, please don't speak on my behalf. I'm just kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm, I mean, I'm into understanding what he was saying. I'm not gonna co-sign the game. Yeah, no, I wasn't looking for a coach, but I guess what I was looking for is basically, if we were to channel Gary V, you know, one of the best marketers in the world, how would you recommend in 2023 to build up like social media, a community behind it, get people really involved so that you're getting that kind of, produce, you know, you're gonna say produce content, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what the funny part is of like why my world is what I talk about in business is similar to the way people talk in health and fitness. Everyone's walking around saying, how do I get into better shape or feel better? Let me save you time. You eat better. (laughs) You get your protein ratios up. You don't eat as much sugar and carbs and all that dog shit. You eat cleaner. You go to the gym. You work on building up your strength. 
everyone, the, the, the formula is super simple. There's nobody here that doesn't understand how to get into better physical shape. Doing it is hard. Yeah. The number one way in 2023 to get a board game from 15,000 to a million is posting four times a day on TikTok with different creative that shows the game, three to four times on Instagram, four times on YouTube Shorts, three times on LinkedIn, Twitter, Threads, Meta, Awesome. Organic content on social networks at the highest level that you can output is going to give you what you want. Nice. Thanks, man. You got it, man. Hey there, what's up, Gary? My name's Alkia Mohammed. I'm here with my friend Ansu. Um, we're both in the real estate industry and e-commerce. We're both 16, so what advice would you give us to set ourselves from other entrepreneurs? That you don't need to set yourself up in a different way than other entrepreneurs. The fact that you're both 16. Yes! A lot of people worry about, notice the themes if you've been listening, you don't need to worry about other entrepreneurs. You don't need to worry about it. You need to keep honing your skills. There's only so much shit you could be doing in real estate when you're 16, right? Yeah. Like, you're just early. Like, you just need to keep practicing. Don't worry about setting apart from everyone else. Just worry about you being good at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. How's it going? Pretty good. What's going well? Um, I'm good on the phone and door knocking. I'm getting leads. Yes. Um, yeah. So you're not scared of getting no's? No. That's a very good fucking start. Thank you. Let me tell you my favorite piece of advice to a 16-year-old entrepreneur who's hungry. How you make your money is more important than how much you make. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Okay. Gotcha. Is it cool if I can come get a picture with you, please? Yes, sir. Woo! Who's that dude that started this shit? I gotta go? Cool. Hey. Hi, Gary. You're awesome. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Carolyn Zanetti. Carolyn, how are you? I'm fabulous. I also want to say thank you to this guy. I love your story and I'm excited to scale with ads, so you rock. Thank, Thank you, you for holding the vision and bringing this legend and asking for what you want and creating it. Thank you. Thank and um, I actually just came up here for the opportunity and have thought of the best question. And uh, I am all about nervous system regulation, emotional regulation with somatics, embodiment tools. And yep. I know you're Mr. Mindset and I believe in both top down, yes. bottom up. Yep. And I thought a powerful question would be, I would love to speak to your team and give them some nervous system regulation tools. I'm a, a genius at it and I've got loads of value to share to help them be more calm, alive and move from procrastination, perfection, but by feeling safe in their body to receive their desires and have that energy. So could I... Was that, was that a question? Yes. It I, seemed more like a pitch. Yes, I thought, but I thought that might be smart. Like, I was sharing tools that I could help you and you exchange. Were more, you were more than welcome to email me at... Okay. com. Yep. Put all your spiel in there and I'm happy to look at it. Okay, great. And I thought I would do an exchange for a short 20 minute podcast. Right, now you're Request. getting obnoxious. Okay, <laughs> and, can I, and can I have a hug? You can have the hug. Awesome, thanks. My man. What's up, G? Um, I'm Damien from New Zealand. Oh, smart. No, thank you. You're welcome, have a great day. Yes, what's up? I'm Damien from New Zealand. I got that hug at VCon, it was a great hug. Thank I you. love your hat. Yeah, nice hat, did you bring your pins? I don't have any pins on me. Um, so I experienced VCon and at the start of VCon you talked around how everyone was gonna be there who came you know, to family, that journey that you see would go on from strangers to acquaintances to friends to family. Yes. And that was for me the epitome of VCon. Like that was, it was what it was, it was what, it was what everyone I was talking to, everyone loved that. Um, and so I'm, I run a, a small agency working with Shopify uh, and I was wondering, with all the wins that you've had through VFriends and building VFriends in this beer market, you know, you guys are going from strength to strength. The card show obviously was amazing. All the collaborations. What do you think that uh, e-commerce businesses can take from your learnings within building this community that are empowered to grow the brand themselves? You know, VCon has moved beyond you, beyond just sure. the characters. What do you think e-commerce businesses can learn from that? I mean, that brand 
is the ultimate way to sell, right? Like brand over everything. The reason most people that focus just on math and ads don't build the biggest things in the world is because the art and the communication and the emotion always outflanks the math. You need the math. Math is massively important. I'm obsessed with ads. We run billions at VaynerMedia. But if you're asking me what can an e-commerce business learn from vFriends and vCon, the answer is brand over everything. And brand means storytelling and good intent and content with no expectation of a transaction in return on that day. Our last one. Oh. Team, I've got to go to the next thing. I'm so sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my name's Patrick. I'm a 17-year-old student. I graduate high school at the end of next year. I come from a very traditional like family who yes. wants me really badly to become a doctor because of its like stability and like respect that you get given. Correct. However, I feel like that I've always been interested in like entrepreneurship. Yes. As someone with your expertise yes. and experience, what are your recommendations? To not become someone? a doctor. Um, <laughs> and also, um, as an entrepreneur, how do people like you like gain the respect of the like the general like population? I guess by executing. Executing. Right. right. Like, I think it's so common for Eastern European, Asian, Indian parents for the doctor, lawyer, engineer thing. The most important thing is that you don't make the same mistake your parents are making, which is you're trying to be respected. The best way to get respected is by not, by not seeking respect. It's by respecting others, but not trying to get it from them. Right? You're, you're in a double path. One, you're trying to figure out how the fuck to not be a doctor because your parents want it bad. Yeah. And then second, that's fine. That's a, that's a generation, that is like a huge thing that's going on in the world. Good news, there are millions and millions and millions of kids predominantly from certain parts of the world and immigrant families that are being pushed to do the same thing. You're not alone on this, but you cannot compromise on this. Because there's only one outcome. You will end up resenting your parents. If, you, if anyone here goes on to do in a profession, what their parents made them do when they had no interest, the outcome is always resentment. But the bigger thing that scares me is not that, it's looking for respect. That's gonna put you in a shitty spot for yourself. The only way to get respect is to earn it. You can't communicate it. But more importantly, try not to make that your validation. Respect yourself. Give respect to others. You'll get everything you need from that. Thanks, Mark. I gotta go. Brisbane! Thank you so much! Brisbane, thank you so much!